Aloha! Top of the morning, friends and family, and welcome to the sharing of Clutch 2404 video. If you've been watching consistently, you might be wondering what 2404, what happened to 2402 and 2403? Those clutches do exist. I'm just not going to make public videos for them. I will make videos for them, and they will be linkable through their Morph Market ads when they go up, go up because I have not listed anything on Morph Market this season yet. Um, I'm just waiting for, I don't know exactly what I'm waiting for, honestly, but I am, I just haven't listed anything up there yet. Planning to at some point. Don't know what it is going to be this catalyst that makes me do it finally, but my point is that every clutch will have a video that shows each individual snake. They just won't all go up publicly as a Saturday video here on my channel because some of them are just small and they will be very short videos like the ones that I shared from the fishing video last weekend. Uh, if you missed that, link in the description or watch it right here. You missed out on a pretty good video. The kids were in it, which is probably why YouTube's not showing it to anybody, but there you go. Uh, let's start off with the first snake here in Clutch 2401, which the clutch was a pairing between suitor number one, our Enchi Clown 100% Het Pied male, and Princess, our Piebald 100% Het Clown female. Snake number one here is a female, which is going to be 100% het, pied, and clown. Double het, pied clown. Super interesting thing going on, not just with this snake, but this entire clutch has really interesting things happening with it. This head stamp is particularly wild. It almost looks like it's trying to be, I don't know what, but that head stamp is just funky. I've never seen a normal ball python with a head stamp quite like this. I And even the back of the snake, there's some funky pattern going on. And you're gonna see it's gonna be a theme throughout this entire clutch, really. And so, is this an Enchi? Is this a normal? I mean, <laughs> sure. Either way, it's definitely double head pied clown. Keep with the theme as we always do on these. We're gonna start with the least genetically impressive to the most genetically impressive animal. Um, actually, this one is the one with the runt. So you're gonna see an update on how that little runt is doing. She's still here, still kicking, still alive, still very small. Anyway, there's snake number one. Snake number two here is another female, and this is an Enchi Clown, 100% Het Pied. Looking particularly nice, I would say. Uh, just looks good. Has a cool, very reduced pattern for Enchi Clown. Um, Enchi Clown always, ha always have a reduced pattern, but this one even is more reduced. Almost reminiscent of like trying to become a super Enchi Clown especially on the head, you know, lacking a bit of pattern there, but but not because it couldn't be Super Enchi because there was only one copy of the Enchi mutation um, in this clutch. So we couldn't have had Super Enchi unless something really weird happened, which as I mentioned, you're gonna see in this clutch, it gets a little more weird. This one is the more normal, I guess, looking of the morphs out of this clutch. Again, snake number two, female, Enchi, clown, 100% het, piebald. This one here is where it starts to get a little interesting. This is snake number three. This is a male, and he has some crazy paradoxing or or more probably more likely chimera action happening. The head very much Enchi clown. The head actually almost reminiscent of an Enchi pied clown, if that's a thing uh, for a head to look. But also, if you look towards the middle of him here, that is very much an Enchi clown pattern. And then if you look to the, uh, I guess that's the front of the middle. If you look towards the second half of the snake, that is much more reminiscent of a low white pied. So it would appear to me that half of this snake is Enchi clown and half of this snake is Enchi pied. Not 100% sure what to do with that other than like probably keep him back and pair him, you know, what I'll probably end up doing actually is get a, a shed test done on this guy and see just what the genetics are going on with him. And then we'll do an update here once I find that out. Just curious, like, is, is this an Enchi Clown Pied genetically? Phenotypically, this guy is a mess. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Fly, dude. We shall see, but super interesting, super cool, uh, super arboreal. Let's, let's move on. Here we go is one of our favorite snakes that we produced ever at Triple B, and that is an Enchi Clown Pied. Just a, a shy male. 
freaking fly, bro. Yeah, so snake number four, and she clown pied. Nothing weird, no weird paradoxing, just a exceptionally beautifully colored and she clown pied. Um, again, that was weird when I popped him a little bit there. I was like, oh, yeah. him? Yeah, it's just got some shy peens, but there's that's peen action in there for sure. So he is definitely going to be available at some point whenever I decide to put snakes on Morph Market. I wish I could tell you when that's going to be. I don't know. It will be at some point. Maybe after the election when things calm down with the economy. I don't know. I don't know. I'm really just kind of enjoying the process of raising these snakes up and nice and easy, slowly. No rush. Not trying to get them out there real quick. I'm actually enjoying that process of just keeping them, raising them up, not trying to move them out the door really fast. I'm, I'm actually enjoying that. So I, I don't know. I, that's good. I'm, I'm happy to hold on to them for a bit and not try to put them out there. That being said, if there's a snake in this video that you're just like, I need that snake, leave a comment down below or, or email me right here at bcuscoatme.com or, or reach out to me on Morph Market. You can send me a message there even if it's not for the snake that you're sending the message to, I believe, because I have literally no snakes listed on Morph Market. So, or Instagram, you know, there's, there's so many ways to get a hold of me if you really want to. So I'm not saying they're always easy, but there, there are many ways. This one kind of throws me for a loop. Snake number five here is an Enchi Clown Pied? I mean, that head is definitely clown, and it screams to me Enchi Clown, and yet the pattern is very low, which the thing I love about Enchi Clown Pieds is, generally speaking, you get a very high amount of pattern on the snake, which is my favorite thing about producing them. Now, my understanding is that piebaldism is very random, and so I'm thinking you still could have an Enchi Pied Clown, that was high white like this one is. And you could just be lucky if you're a person that really likes a high white and you still get to have Enchi involved in the genetics of the snake. So Enchi clown pied, what I'm calling it. Somebody want to call me different? I'm not going to fight about it in the comments. I'll just read it with utmost interest. Freaking fly, bro. <sighs> Drives me crazy. I finally put a screen door on this plate, on this room. Where every now and then, like, it's the magnet type. So the magnet, like, sticks to the freezer that's outside sometimes and leaves it open anyway and a fly comes in and just like gosh dang it so many flies congregate just outside my garage hoping for a chance to come into this room drives me nuts i killed three this morning one left and here we have snake number six who could forget our little pardon the interruption my my battery just died oops so again snake number six the little runt um she I don't even know if it's a he or she. I've been not wanting to really do too much down here because of the volatile, volatile, because of just how small the snake is. I haven't done any um, popping or whatnot. Oh, it's a boy. Okay. He's got some big peens for a little guy. Uh, he is tiny still. He's had meals. He's taken recently to just killing a little live fuzzy mouse and then dropping it in the water, leaving it there. He did, the last time he did that, I took it and just kind of assist fed style, put it into his mouth, and then he went ahead and chomped it up from there. So, um, still cruising. The nice thing about um, ball pythons or snakes in general is they come out of those eggs with a pretty good amount of nutrients already absorbed from the yolk. And um, maybe this guy, not as much the case, which is why he's so small, but they can go for a long time without their first meal. So this guy's had some meals, so he's gonna, you know, he's still doing okay. The thing that's amazing is how long a baby snake fresh out of the egg can actually go. I mean, we're talking months for sure. You know, I guess nothing's for sure, but a baby snake can survive for quite a long time without getting a meal. So luckily he's having some and he's not gotten too much bigger than he was when he hatched, but we're gonna keep on plugging along with him until he just starts growing up and getting bigger and more robust and or whatever else happens. And that's, we'll just keep you updated on that and know what happens there. But uh, I'd like to thank you for watching the video. If you're getting one of these snakes, that's why I make these four so you can say that my snake was on the internet and in a video and I can go look at it when it was a baby and have baby pictures and baby videos. So that's, that's why I do these in addition to just wanting to share the cool snakes that we get to produce here at Triple B with you. So thank you again for watching. Take care of yourselves, take care of each other and we'll see you on the next video. Aloha.